First Bank. Welcome to Business News. The Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company Limited, Mr. Bismarck Ruwani, has explained that the law allows the executive to spend up to 50% of the previous year's budget in the first three months of the new year, while the present year's budget is being considered. This is in reaction to a statement from the Budget Office that the budget for the 2014 fiscal year ended at midnight on December 31, 2014. There have been reports in some of the nation's dailies that the 2014 budget had been extended to the end of March 2015, which the agency said was not true. This year is peculiar because we have the budget in the midst of an electoral campaign. So all the legislators are going to be going back to the constituencies and all that. Uh, I think it's only fair to allow the executive to spend what they're spending, at least up to 50% of what they spent last year, so that they can, the government does not come to a... Uh, it's not shut down. He, uh, the, the government has to run. Okay. Even after the election, the government will run between February 21 and May 29. We call it a lame duck session, but the government has to run. Owing to the public holiday declared by the federal government to celebrate Eid al Malud. At the end of only three days of trading at the Nigerian local burst this week, key indicators ended 2014 0.66% higher at 34,657.15. For the week, 1.24 billion shares worth 15.89 billion naira were exchanged by investors in 12,018 deals. Percentage-wise, the top three gainers were Vono Products, Champion Breweries and Continental Reinsurance PLC. The top three price decliners for the week were led by Oando with a 3 Naira 86 Cobble loss. All financial markets are expected to reopen on Monday the 5th. In 2014, the Nigerian stock market had countless activities, cutting the course transactions, initiatives and developmental projects. The market kicked off the year in volatility but ended negative after reacting to the pressure on macroeconomic variables. Operators at the exchange believe that the losses in the year were characterized by the fall in crude oil price and electioneering. Our correspondent Tempo Ashadu reports. 2014 can be described as a period of rise and fall for the Nigerian stock market as securities witnessed seasons of appreciation but ended the calendar in a year-to-date loss of 16.14 percent. Well, my word for it is a misgrill of uh, performance. There were gains, there were losses, but the net of it was a loss. Year-end from beginning was a loss position. Almost all the uh, companies listed on the market, they have paid equivalent or more than what they paid last year. So in that regard, I would say that the market has done very well. The just ended year also had more rights issues outweighing other forms of offers. However, the surplus IPO and the Transcore Hotels offer revived that faded means of raising capital. <laughs> The year in review has the listing of companies such as Caverton, Omoluabi Savings and Loans, as well as the listing of two exchange traded funds. However, four companies were delisted. The only issue is we've not had, based on our expectation, maybe more companies coming into the market. And uh, I am aware that the stock exchange is working assiduously to make sure that we have more new listings. There were modifications in the area of initiatives such as the trade alert system and VAT exemption on equities transactions. But more significantly, the local boss became a full member of the World Federation of Exchanges. Temple Ashaju, Channel Television News. Well, that's it on Business News. The rest of the News 10 continues in just a moment.
Bank. Bank. Welcome to Sports News. Super Eagles captain Vincent Inyama has been named the best shot stopper in the French League for 2014. A French football magazine, L'Equip, chose the 32-year-old as the league's top goalkeeper despite Lille's average start to the season that leaves them in 13th place on the lock. Nigeria Premier League side Dolphins FC have completed the signing of last season's third highest goal scorer, Peter Ebimoboe. Now, details of the contract are undisclosed, but sources say the Port Harcourt club sealed the deal in last week, in the last week of 2014. Now, Andy Murray is through to the final of the Mubadala Invitational Tennis Championship in Abu Dhabi. The 27-year-old Scott was too strong for Rafa Nadal beating his Spanish rival 6-2, 6-love. Now, the six-man exhibition event is the unofficial season opener with top seeds Nadal and Djokovic receiving buys to the semis. Still on the Mubadala Championship, world number one Novak Djokovic took just 57 minutes to beat Stan Wawrinka 6-1-6-2 in the second semi-final. In his first match since featuring at the Indian Premier Tennis League, the Serb reeled off five games in a row to wrap up the first set in just 30 minutes. <laughs> That's it in sports news. The news at 10 continues shortly. On the foreign scene, here's some good news concerning the Ebola virus. The deadly Ebola outbreak could end this year. Here's Cynthia Arre with more details. Thanks a lot. That optimistic news was delivered by Anthony Banbury, who is the head of the UN team. He's optimistic that the number of Ebola cases would be brought down to zero by the close of this year. But he did admit that the end was not close. The virus has killed nearly 8,000 people, mostly in Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea, where the disease started in December 2013. Also today, the search for Air Asia flight QZ8501, which crashed into the sea on Sunday, has moved underwater with the arrival of specialist equipment. A French crash investigation team is using sensitive acoustic detection devices to try to locate the plane as well as its black box flight recorders. The Airbus A320-200 was flying from Surabaya in Indonesia to Singapore with 162 people on board when it vanished. Then soldiers loyal to Gambian President Yahya Jammeh are rounding up opponents after a reported coup attempt. President Jammeh has blamed dissidents based in the U.S., Germany and the U.K. for the attack. Heavy gunfire was heard near the presidential palace in Banjul on Tuesday, but the details are still sketchy. Finally, Kenya's High Court has suspended some sections of the controversial new security law, which was enacted two weeks ago amid fierce opposition. The court blocked eight clauses until a legal challenge mounted by the opposition and rights groups is heard. And that's the foreign news wrap-up. Thank you, Cynthia. And the main news again. The Nigerian government has acquired a new warship with a capacity of 146 personnel from the United States to strengthen its fight against pirates. And prominent Nigerians, including the Oba of Lagos, Rilwan Akiolu, and Nigeria's former permanent representative to the United Nations, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, have backed a call by the president 
for violence-free elections in February. Well, thank you for watching the news at 10 tonight. Do join us again tomorrow. Have a beautiful weekend. I'm Bimbo Loyede. Bye for now.